two years. It's been two years. It's hard to believe. And many of you have been with us from, from the very early days before, even before we got started. And it's been an exciting journey. It's been extremely rewarding, more than I think Melissa and I bargained for in a lot of ways. There's been some extreme challenges that some of you have been, been through with us. I'll look over here. <laughs> Just gonna look over here at Tim. Tim makes me smile. <laughs> Tim makes me smile. I'm just going to stare at Tim this whole day. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It's been, a, it's been an extreme blessing, you know, more so than we, we imagined. And, you know, there's been some challenges, and every challenge we've faced, we've had a, just an amazing tr triumph in, an amazing victory. Go figure, hey? Yeah. Name a church victory center, and this is what you get. You get a chance to live in victory. <laughs> and I just really felt today just to kind of reflect on where we came from and, and what, we're, what we're doing here. And just to spend a few minutes on that and then to spend a few minutes eating cake. But in the middle, I have something I really wanted to share with you guys about what I, the, the Lord really spoke to me last night. And it was, it was awesome when you, when you hear from the Lord and then you can, you can hear, hear the Holy Spirit whisper a verse to you. And then you can go to the Word, you can look it up, and you can, then the Holy Spirit just tells you what He's saying. And then you have a whole chapter, and the Holy Spirit's just speaking to you. And it's awesome. The Word of God is awesome. The Holy Spirit, you know, I I'm sure most of you probably heard of David Hogan, but if you haven't, you're about to. You know, David Hogan is this extreme individual, you know, extreme, he's an extreme missionary, is basically the best way to describe him. And if you've hung around him at all, you've probably heard him say, Holy Ghost, Word of God. Holy Ghost, Word of God. That's all you need. Holy Ghost, Word of God. You got it. And man, the more I'm in ministry, the more I realize, man, Holy Ghost, Word of God. <laughs> you know, Holy Ghost, Word of God. They go together. Holy Ghost is going to tell you the Word of God, and the Word of God is going to is going to lead you into an encounter with the Holy Ghost. And last night it was Holy Ghost, Word of God, and it was it was awesome. And I'm 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 going to talk about what I prepared to talk about with the, the direction, you know, that we, we, we plotted a course, you know, when you, when you're starting, when you're starting a course, when you're, when you're beginning something, you kind of, you snap a, you know, you try to snap a chalk line when you, you know, I had the pleasure of laying some floor this past week doing some remodeling and you snap a chalk line so you can see where you're going. You, you, you know, I want to end here. I'm starting here and I need to go in a straight line. And two years ago, we, we snapped a line and we said, this is where we want to be in two years. And, you know, by faith, I think we're there. You know, I believe God's, God has us exactly where he wants us. You know, we, we, we stepped out in faith to do this. And in the end, this, it, we're, we're exactly where God wants us to be, and we're doing exactly what God wants us to be doing. Because we have the Word of God and we have the Holy Spirit. And when, when we... When we work, when we walk with that, when we walk in that, you get to hear from God. You get to walk in his will. You get to see where he's taking you. You can see where you're going before you get there. And you don't, you don't necessarily know all the steps. You don't know all the steps, but he knows, he knows where you're going. And he's a good God. He's a good God. And for the last, the last couple of years, I really felt like we've been really laying this foundation of, of knowing God, you know, the foundational truths of the scripture and just really laying a foundation in the word, laying a foundation because before, before you do anything, you have to have the flooring in place. You have to have the footing in place. You have to have the foundation in place before you can bring it, build upon that. You have to, you have to start. And I think a lot of us came in here and we had, you know, we, we had like the, I'm thinking in flooring terms, we had the subfloor. But we needed to lay the floor on top of that to bring it up to level before we could start laying the laminate. You know what I'm saying? And I just really feel like God has been speaking to me over the last few days, even as I was doing my remodeling project. Like, yeah, this is this is what you've been. This is what 
I've been doing in your church. You know, when you, when you came in, you thought you were going to pull up your carpet and everything was going to look good and you could just... But when we came in here and God pulled the carpeting back to put our new floor in, we saw, oh, wait, we don't really have a good subfloor in place. We don't really have a good foundation in place. And I really believe the last two years, you know, even with Melissa and I, he's been reworking, he's been redoing some of the things in our hearts and in our minds that we thought were good. But he was like, yeah, I, you know, I really appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> Let me show you a few things before you get to where, you, you know, to where you're going. And am I echoey or is it just me? Am I good? Okay. It's just me. All right. And I, I, I feel like that's the, same, that's the same story with this church. We thought we were in a much better place we, than we were when we started. You know, we, we thought we were better, we thought we were further ahead than we started. We didn't realize, we didn't realize how much work God wanted to do in us. In, in us, in, in each individual here, individually before we can corporately get to where he wants us to be. And it's so fun because God is so good and he is so gentle and he is so kind and he is so patient. He's not, he's not in a rush. You know, he's long suffering. His mercies endure forever. He's not yelling at us saying, come on, I thought you'd be further ahead than you were now. He's like, you're exactly where I thought you'd be. Why? Because I knew where you were going to be when I started you, <laughs> you know, and it's just so much fun to be partnered with him. It is, it is so much fun. I, I am, you know, Paul talks about uh, nothing, nothing matters to him ex except he gets to have the joy of the preaching the gospel. And I think it's Romans, hang on, let me, let me pull up my notes. Because I really feel like, you know, when you have the joy of preaching the gospel, when you, when you get to walk in the joy of preaching the gospel, it doesn't, you're, not that, I want to be careful how I say this, I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression about me, because I'm all about results, <laughs> but Romans 12 Actually, hang on, X, X uh, 20, 24. But none of these things move me, neither count myself life, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. You know, and I, I just really felt like that verse was just speaking, speaking to us today. Man, we get to... We get to do this ministry. We get to do this ministry to the Lord with great joy because we're focused on the gospel of grace. We're focused on the, the, the true gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you are not, when you are in ministry and it's about religion and it's about rules and it's about just the, the, just the rules, when you have a relationship with religion, your joy is going to be really dependent upon your circumstances, you know? Like I could look around this church and be like, man, why isn't this place full today? Why isn't there 150 people here? Where's the joy in that? But you know what? I get to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of joy in that. There's a lot of joy in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, no matter what my circumstances are, I get to be in joy. I get to walk in in joy, knowing that I am preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am doing what he's called me to do. He has called me into ministry to preach his gospel. You know, we have, we have a direction as a church, and the first and foremost direction that we have is to just proclaim the kingdom of God and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when we walk in that, we walk in joy. We walk in joy, and, and really, none, nothing, none of these things move me. Like it doesn't, like it doesn't matter. Like I remember when, when I first got into ministry, my vocational calling into ministry was from the Lord. Like he literally came to me and told me he wanted me to be in full-time ministry. And my response was, I don't even know what that means. 
Like, what are you saying? I don't get it. I don't know what full-time ministry is. Like, I was like, this doesn't make sense, God. And it happened after I, I was in the marketplace. I was successful. I, 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 I fell in love with Jesus. I was born again, but I, I, did, I had a saving knowledge of Christ, but I didn't have a, like, a crazy, impassioned knowledge. I got this crazy, impassioned knowledge for, for the Lord, and I just started really going after, like, advancing the kingdom, releasing the kingdom. But I was in a full-time marketplace. And then you get to this internal struggle. If you're a marketplace guy, which 97, 98% of you are in the marketplace, 2 to 3% of the church, 2 to 3% of Christians are going to be called vocationally into full-time ministry. That means 98% of us are full-time ministry in a different profession outside of the church, outside of the four walls, which is awesome. And I was in that 98% for the majority of my life. And, and I finally was like, you mean I'm in full-time ministry right now? You mean all the people I see every single day when I'm at work, when I'm out, uh, when I'm out in the field, when I'm doing stuff with my agents, when I'm doing stuff with clients and customers and the people back at home office, you mean they count? You mean all the witnessing I'm doing matters? Not that I wasn't doing it before then, but in my head, I just didn't, I couldn't make the connection. And I, and I made the connection, and I'm like, well, praise God, this is awesome. And then a short time later, God's like, I want you in full-time ministry. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, wait, I just figured this out. Like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> I, I just started enjoying my career and not feeling guilty about my success and, and not feeling guilty that I wasn't serving in the church more. And now you want me to do what? Like, I don't even get it. And, and he, he called me out, and I just said, Lord, if this is your will, if this is really your voice, I'm here, and you need to tell my wife. Because you know I'm not going to tell her? Because if I did, she wouldn't believe me. And you're the one who put us together, so you tell her. And then he did, like three days later. I didn't say a word. And then he speaks to her, and she's visibly shaken. And she comes to me, and she said, this is what the Lord said. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> My response was like, oh, no, he did? Oh, no. So this is, that's my calling into ministry, people. Like, that's my vocational calling into ministry was, uh, oh, no, really? <laughs> you know, I didn't go to school for this. I didn't go to school for this. I, my degree is in elementary education. I am from Pound, Wisconsin. I grew up on a dairy farm. I grew up milking cows. All right? I went to, I graduated from Coleman High School. I had 50, I think 55, 60 kids in my graduating class. I'm just a little, I'm a little hayseed from Palm, Wisconsin. I made it big in the big city. Got a job working in financial service. My, I, I, worked, I worked at Gold's Gym as a personal trainer. This is who your pastor is. I worked at Gold's Gym as a personal trainer after college. And then I got into finan insurance and financial services because I decided I wanted to make a bunch of money. And it worked. I made a bunch of money. It was great. And, and then the Lord called me to full-time ministry. And everything has been really awesome. <laughs> you know, my life was awesome. My life was awesome before. You know, with Jesus, your life is awesome wherever you are. If you realize how awesome your life is, you are going to have an awesome life. I had Jesus. My life was awesome. My marriage was awesome. Our personal life was awesome. Everything was awesome. And God just directed my path into full-time ministry. And it took me a while to figure out what that actually, well, I'm still, you know, I'm kind of figuring it out now what like full-time ministry means, you know, vocationally full-time ministry, because you're all in full-time ministry. Every single person in this room, you are in full-time ministry. You're ministering to each other. You're ministering to your family. You're ministering to the Lord. You're ministering to the, the people you come in contact with every single day. You are all in full-time ministry. When I was vocationally called into ministry, it kind of made my head spin and then, and then to, to further complicate things, then about a, what, a year, two years later, God calls us into planting a church. Two years, about two years? And we were like, oh, who's this word for? No. Who's it for? Come on, God, please tell us. <laughs> it's for you. Oh. Yeah. And he came to me and he told me, and I was just like, I think that must be a mistake, Lord. Like, I either you got the, you're either kidding with me because... Or, I'm hearing you wrong. Again, God, if this is you, here's my fleece. Tell Melissa, because I'm not going to say a word. And boom, what, like three days later, she comes to me and she's like, this is what the Lord says. I was like, oh, wow, he did say that. Because I kind of was like, I can't hear you, Lord. For like three days, my fingers in my ears walking around humming in the spirit. My fingers in my spiritual ears. And then she comes to me and she's like, this is what the Lord is saying. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. And it shook us up. It shook us up. 
because we were in a church in town here. You guys know it. We were at a church in town here, and we were like, there's no way. So we started, okay, well, we're going to move because we can't plant a church in the same town that you've called us to. Like, this is impossible. Like, we're, we're already here. We're already a part of this leadership team at this church. You want us to plant another church? We're going to move someplace warm because we're done with Madison. We're moving someplace warm. So we get the real estate agent over. You know, getting, re- getting our house ready to go on the market. We're looking at nice cities, you know. Like, I'm, I'm not making this story up at all. Like, okay, statistically speaking, where's the easiest place to plant a church in the United States? We look it up. And it's warm. Great. It's the Bible Belt. It's the southern part of, you know, this is going to be easy. You know, you could throw up a cardboard box and hang a church sign on. People are going to show up. This is going to be, we have a guaranteed win. And literally, he was just like, I want it in Madison. I was like, oh, Madison. You want us to do it in Madison? I am not telling Melissa. I'm not. <laughs> then she comes to me next week. He wants to do it in Madison. I'm like, I know. I know he wants to do it in Madison. But that's impossible. This is impossible. We're in a church. They're not going to release us to plant a church in Madison. Our church is in Madison. They're not releasing anybody to plant anything. If God wants this to happen, he's going to have to make it happen. Imagine that. Wow, let's, let's leave it up to God. So I said, God, if we pray, and we're like, Lord, you are not into church splits. If you want this to happen, you're going to have to make it happen. And like two weeks, three weeks later, I'm, standing, I'm sitting in a leadership meeting at Evangel, and Pastor Clark goes, the Lord spoke so clearly to Julie and I. Somebody on this leadership team is supposed to be planting a church. And even if it's in Madison, we are supposed to bless and release you. If that, and I'm thinking, how am I going to get out of this one? Like, I'm, I'm like sitting there, I'm thinking, oh, no. This can't be happening. How am I going to? And then Pastor Clark goes, if that's you, raise your hand right now. And there's like eight, like I'm like eight, ten people in the room. And I think there's like 10 people, maybe. Nine of them go like this, like they duck. Whoa! I'm the only one sitting up, you know? So I'm like, it's me, it's me. And he's like, it's you. It's me. Ah! You know? And he's like, okay, come to my office tomorrow morning. We'll, we'll, we'll do this. And like, what, six weeks later, we had our first service. Six weeks later. That's how much planning this thing had. Six weeks later. But the Lord was on it, and he was just like, he said, now, I want you to do this now. It was like we were being shot out of a cannon. It was awesome. <laughs> and it was, you know, everything. I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm sharing some of this prophetic testimony because it, it stirs me up when I talk about it. I want you guys to get stirred up. When, when we pray, like the Lord, Melissa and I pray, where are we supposed to plant the church? We're praying separately because we want to be able to come together and know that we both heard from the Lord. And we both say we're supposed to start. Our, we're supposed to have our services at the Crown Plaza. Oh, that's awesome. We both heard the same thing. So we start our services at the Crown Plaza. Well, then come. So that was uh, two years ago. I'm trying. When was that? That was two years ago. Today, and then, <laughs> and then come December, we have to leave the Crown Plaza. And we need another place. So I get in my minivan van, and I'm driving around, and I said, Holy Spirit. Where am I supposed to move this church to? And I'm driving down East Wash, and I could feel, I could feel the anointing of the Lord. And as I drove right past the tire place, you know, the tattoo thing on the left there, right before I get to High V, like whew, the anointing lifts. Yeah, turn around, drive back. And I'm like, I'm like using my God positioning system, and it's like okay, and I'm just driving, and I can just feel the anointing, and I pull up right in front of this church here, right out those doors, and I look up, and there's a sign that says Now Faith Ministries, and I thought, what, what is that? I've never seen that before. Oh, it's a church. Well, that's weird. So I'm knocking on the door trying to get inside and calling the guy. It took me a few days to get a hold of the pastor. And I'm like, hey, uh, can I rent from you? Can I rent from you on a Saturday night? And this is what we ended up working out. But like Lord, the Lord literally directed us to this exact spot here. So then, we take, so then we're in here in uh, December. We started our meetings in December. And it was, it was, it was, there was a lot of friction, you know, with us having to do takedown and set up and we'd come in here and we have, it would take us like three hours to get things going. And it was, it was a lot easier being at the hotel. It was a lot easier being at the hotel. Every, I mean, here was like so much more work. And so I was like, Lord, did I, did we do this right? Did I miss it? And he's like, yep, you did it right. I'm like, okay. The next day, Lord, did I do you know, I was like, Lord, did we miss it? Yeah, yeah, like every, like every Saturday, we'd have our service, and after, you know, it'd be an awesome service, but then the next day, we'd be like, okay, Lord, where do you want us next Saturday? Same spot. Ah, you know, and it was just really, and then 
Uh, and then I was really frustrated, and it was about February or March. I mean, I got really frustrated really quickly because it wasn't fun. And I'm like, Lord, what? We, we either have to be there uh, full-time or we shouldn't be there at all. And he's like, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay. Well, what does that mean? He's like, when you come back from Tijuana, I was going to Tijuana at the end of July. He's like, when you come back from Tijuana, you're going to have full possession of that spot. I thought, wow. And I heard really clearly on this one, like loud, like on that audible voice, but like wow, wow, with like loud voice. So I said, okay. And so I, t- I start telling people, man, when I come back from Tijuana, that spot's going to be ours. That was easy to say in February, March, April, May. By the time June rolls around, there's like no indication. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I'm not saying it anymore. I'm like, Lord, did I hear from you right on this one? And he's like, yep. So I, okay. God said, this spot's going to be ours next, next month, full time. So then, I, so I step out of faith. And I go, I take, the, I take this pastor out to lunch. And I said, you know, so God told me this spot's going to be mine next month. So I don't know what your plan is, but hey, you know. <laughs> If you're ready to move out, we're ready to take it over. And he's just like, yeah, I know. You know <laughs> we're, we're, we're build, we're, we bought a new spot, but we're going to keep both. We're going to have two locations. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, if God tells you anything different, let me know. What, two weeks later, we're moving out. Amen. He's like, after you went after you took me out to lunch and told me what the Lord said, you were so convinced. He's like, I started to listen. And I thought, you know what? He does want us to move out of there. And so, like, literally, they, we had, what, like, two weeks' notice, and they were moved out. They were moved out August 1st. We didn't even have a lease in place until, the, like, halfway through September because our landlord was like, whoa, they're moving out. Like, it was just, like, boom, like, really fast. And we took it, we took it over. And I was like, wow, God, that's awesome. You know? And so, I, you know, when you have – and there's been more and more and more things like this that have happened from, from day one. Like God just given us confirmation after confirmation after confirmation after direction after direction after direction. And it's just awesome. You know, it's awesome to be able to just, to, to be able to hear from God and to be able to confirm it with his word and to be able to have reliable people that you can get a, you can get a witness, you know, are you hearing this from the Holy Spirit? And to, be able to ha- and to be able to have a God that talks to you and that has intimate knowledge of you. It knows, he, he knows what you need. You know, when I was driving around with my minivan and, and just trying to drive where the spirit was, I ran into a big rock. I backed into this huge, <laughs> like, what was that? And I was like praying in tongues and I'm like, that is not supposed to happen when you're driving in the spirit. <laughs> and I, I mean, I hit it really hard and I was like, I was like, oh, and I literally, I, I was like, shot, I was like, I was like, Lord, that's not supposed to happen. Like I am in the spirit. I am praying in tongues. I am driving where you're telling me to go. And I just hit a rock. So I get out and I look, and there's not even there's not even a scratch on the car, not even a not even a dink, not even a little. And this rock was like this big, and I totally knocked it backwards. I'm like, praise God! I get my car and I keep going. You know, I mean, he, he's got us protected. You know, he knows we're gonna back into things, but he's still got us protected. We we backed into more than rocks on this trip so far. We've we've hit a few potholes here and there, but God's got us protected. He's got us protected, and it's awesome. So last night. I'm like, Lord, I feel like I really got some direction for this church, and I feel like we're, I feel like we snapped that line and we're on it. But I need, I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. And I'm just like, ah, you know, kind of like a moment of desperation. Be real. I was a little desperate. And he says, not by might nor by power, but by my, but my, but by my, but by my spirit. I was like, mm, that's really good, but uh, not a lot of direction. Like, I want a directional word. Like, I want to know. That's really good. You know, and, and I'm like, well, maybe I made that up. And, I, and he said it again, you know, by my spirit, not by my, nor by power, but by my spirit. And I was like, okay. Okay, I feel good. That's good. I feel good. Okay. Hmm. Kind of wanted a directional word. <laughs> and he's like, look it up. I'm like, oh, okay. So I looked it up. And Zechariah 4. Uh, let's go to Zechariah chapter 4. This is awesome. I'm going to start the whole the whole the whole chapter is for us, but I could I could stay here for the next like five hours and let you know what he told me, or I could just give you the let's eat cake version. Um, okay, <laughs> this is awesome. Then the angel. I'm going to start in verse five. Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, "Do you not know what these are?" I said, "No, my lord." Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord for Zerubbabel. 
not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice. Woo! And shall see this plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this word couldn't be, it couldn't be more clear. It couldn't be more clear to me. The Lord was so awesome. He is awesome. I was literally thinking about the plumb line in my hands. I was literally thinking about that before he said this to me. And then I look this up, and it's just like the plumb line. And I'm like, Lord, who's Zerubbabel? So I look up Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was a governor. He was a marketplace minister, call it. Market, let's call it the marketplace. I'm going to break it down. Zerubbabel's the market man. He's the governor. He's the king. He's the guy outside of the church. Joshua, not Joshua and Caleb Joshua, but Joshua in this, in this is, is the priest. Zechariah is the, is the prophet who's seeing this. Joshua is the priest in the church. Zerubbabel is the marketplace guy. But Zerubbabel is called into the house of the Lord to rebuild the temple, to establish the temple. And the Lord was saying, man, I have called you. He said, I called you from the marketplace into the temple. I've called you. You've laid a foundation. You're going to see this completed. You've got the plumb line in your hand. Do, <clears throat> whoever has, for whoever has despised the day of small beginnings shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. Man, we're going to re we, today we get to rejoice. Today we get to rejoice. Today we get to rejoice. The Lord has called us. He's called, he's, this is a place, one of the big things with Victory Center from the beginning is my background is the marketplace. You, you know, and you can't get away from who you are. My background is the marketplace. I've been called into the temple of the Lord. I've been called to minister in the temple. And I bring that with me as a marketplace guy. I bring that with me. And God, it was just speaking so strongly to me, like, yep, you have been called here to this temple to lay this foundation, to lay the foundation. You've been doing that for two years. You've got the plumb line in your hand. You're going to see this completed. The mountains that are before you, you're going to knock them down with the back of your hand. You're going to knock them down in my name. There is not a mountain that's going to be able to stand. The mountain, any mountain before you is going to be a plain. You're going to flatten it because you are called and you are appointed. And then if you go on, these, okay, these seven, are, this is where it gets a little interesting, the, 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 I'm just going to read the rest of the chapter. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. Then I said to him, what are these two olive trees on the right and on the left of the lampstand? And a second time I answered him and said to him, what are these two branches of the olive trees, which are beside the two golden pipes from which the golden oil is poured out? He said to me, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the, who stand by the, Lord of the whole earth. The two anointed ones, and you can you interpret this any way you want. This is my interpretation of this. The two anointed ones are Joshua, the priest, and Zerubbabel, the king. The priest, the church minister, the king, the marketplace minister. Those are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord. And together, they come together in, at Victory Center Church to establish the temple of the Lord. You know, the 98% of the kings in this room, the 98% of you with the 2% of the, the ministers of the Lord that are in full-time vocational ministry inside the church come together in this place, and together we establish the temple. Together we expand the kingdom. Together we build the kingdom. And that's awesome. That's awesome. One of the things we're going to be doing here and, and the Lord really spoke clearly about this to me through, through this whole chapter, is we are going to really expand our leadership training. And when I say our leadership training, I'm talking about leadership training for everybody who's here. Everybody who's here is a leader. 
You're all leaders. We're going we're gonna to expand leadership training. I'm, there's only so many opportunities to minister inside the church. There's really only so, many, so much, not that we don't need volunteers, we need a lot of them to do stuff that most people don't want to do, you know? But there's only so many opportunities to minister inside the church. I'm not trying to turn, you, turn you, all of you into church ministers or church leaders. I want to, wherever you're at, is so important and so vital. The Lord says, each of you are Zerubbabel's. Each, we are all kings and priests. We are all kings and priests. Each of us is a Joshua. Each of us is a Zerubbabel. And we need to equip both parts of you. We need to equip both sides of you, not just the side that's going to minister in the church, but the side that's going to minister in the marketplace too. And how do you minister in the marketplace? You minister through excellence. You minister through leadership. You minister through influence. It's all about, like, it's all about expanding your excellence and your influence wherever you're at. Wherever you're at. And, and the Lord, he so, he's so awesome. He is so awesome. He spoke so clearly about this to me last night. You know, and, and these are things that I've been, I've been feeling, like I've, I've been feeling the direction of the Holy Spirit. I've been feeling like this, and we've been laying plans. We've been, you know, snapping that chalk line, and we were like, yep, this is what we're going to do. But last night I just said, Lord, I need confirmation. I, I need confirmation. I need confirmation from you that this is where we're supposed to go. I need this confirmation. I, th- I think I heard your voice, but I want to hear it with beyond a shadow of a doubt. And then he says, not, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Look it up. I'm like, okay. And then I look it up, and it's just like the Holy Spirit just hits me right in the face with it, man. It's awesome. God is awesome. You know, he, in one chapter, he says, you've laid the foundation. You've got the plumb line in your hand. You've done exactly what you're supposed to do. The plumb line is set. You are going to see this completed. You are going to see this built. And you're right. I want you to equip Joshua and Zerubbabel. You have a church full of Zerubbabels. You have a church full of leaders. You have a church full of Joshua's leaders, kings and priests. Equip them to minister and to be effective in the kingdom where they're at. So that's exciting. And yeah, I'm gonna look at Tim now. Tim makes me smile. <laughs> it's like who's nobody. You know what? It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter what our size is today. We have all the cool people here too. I know we have all the cool people here. I know we do. It's awesome. Like we have. I mean, man, we've got a church full of leaders. We've got a church full of leaders. We've got a church full of really. And I'm not just being generic. I'm, I'm being honest. Like we have a church full of really powerful people that can make a huge, huge impact. You're already making a huge impact where you're at. You're already making a huge impact where you're at. But God's just going to, he's going to eat even more, even more, even more. So Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this place. We thank you for equipping us with your word. We thank you for equipping us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for bringing us to the place you want us to be at when you want us to be there, Lord. We thank you for letting us snap a chalk line and just letting us snap that plumb line with your word because your word is, your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It, it is straight, straight, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you for letting us snap that plumb line. We thank you for choosing us and for calling us wherever we're at, Lord. We thank you for calling us wherever we're at. We thank you for equipping us to do the work that you have put before us to do. Lord, we thank you for giving us a day that we can celebrate you. We can celebrate these last two years, Lord, and we can look forward to the future. We can look forward to even more mountains being leveled in your name. We can look forward to even more victory in your name. We can look forward to this, the ever expansion, the, the ever increasing expansion of your kingdom. Lord, we just thank you for letting us walk with you. We thank you for just being an awesome God. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. <laughs>